Hello everybody, Silver Picker here, and today's video is going to be an absolutely absurd and ridiculous one, as you can tell from the title and thumbnail of this video. But I assure you, everything I'm going to tell you in this video is absolutely true. I'm going to share with you exactly how everything went down, and we're going to do a lot more. So in this video, it's going to be a little bit of a story time at the beginning. I'll tell you all the juicy details of how I ended up buying some of these incredible gold coins, the situation that I found myself in, and it'll give you a little bit of a peek behind the curtain at uh, who I am and what I do when I'm not out being silver picker. Although in this case, even when I was out not being silver picker, I still ended up buying coins. So forget all about that. But if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to be talking about some really important things that you as somebody out there that might be interested in getting into the business of buying and selling rare coins, you can use. So I'm going to be showing you these coins in depth. You'll be able to take a look at them up close and personal so you can be on the lookout for them. I'll talk about what I paid for them and how much they're worth and what I'm going to be doing to sell them. And most important, I'm going to be showing you up close how you can figure out whether the gold coins that you're about to buy are real or whether they're fake. This way you'll protect yourself and you won't get ripped off when you're out in the field doing this business. Now, if you like this video and you like videos like it, definitely stick around and hit that big old red subscribe button and also give me a like. It's the classic YouTube stuff. Helps me a ton. It takes very little effort for yourself. So with that, let's take a look at the coins and I'll tell you the ridiculous story of how I ended up getting them. All right, so here we have the three beautiful gold coins that I picked up in this absolutely absurd scenario. And I am going to show you all the ins and outs of them and let you see them up close, but I'm going to uh, put the pause on that for a minute so I can tell you the story, set the scene, and really get you salivating over these amazing gold coins. Now, here's how it started. Now, I am relatively recently single. Uh, my ex-girlfriend and I broke up probably at this point over half a year ago. So, but you know, when it's a serious relationship, you know, that can be uh, still relatively a short period of time. But I am back out there trying to meet the one, the love of my life. And for all of you out there that are also single, you know exactly how hard that can be and what it's like. So uh, for solidarity's sake, if you are single and you know what I'm talking about, hit that big like button, hit that big like button hard in solidarity, and if you're not single and you're in a happy, loving relationship, well, hit the like button too. This way, uh, you know, I'll, uh, you'll give me some of that good, that good mojo, that good juju, uh, and put some of it my way. Anyway, like everyone else in my age group, I do all the classic things to meet, uh, to meet ladies, whether that's using the dating apps or uh, the old-fashioned way at a party or at a bar or with friends or getting set up by friends, all those different ways. And those are all pretty common and I'm pretty comfortable with all of them. I am not comfortable with singles events. Most people do not like singles events. I don't even know why they exist, but they do, and I guess in some cases they must have some good results, but I generally avoid them. So my friend texts me one day and goes, dude, I've got a friend and she's an event planner and her husband is an incredible gourmet chef and they decided to do a singles event where it's basically like a seven course luxury dinner on their rooftop, all curated delicious fancy food and it'll be speed dating. So you do a couple minutes with each person. It'll be 11 guys, 11 girls, and it's not like those classic awkward singles events, and uh, it'll be fun. It'll be fun, he said. It'll be fun, he said. Well, you know, I said, what do I have to lose, right? Except for, uh, you know, 50 bucks. But 50 bucks for a really solid meal and a fun night, why not? So I signed up, I did it, and I get there, and it was amazing food, I gotta say. That was worth it, so definitely amazing food. But I was not really interested in uh, any of the uh, speed dates that I was on. Just didn't click with them or, uh, you know, just it wasn't, it wasn't my cup of tea. You know, there wasn't attraction, there wasn't a good, you know, the vibes were off, whatever it is, you all know how it is. So I get to one though, and of course it comes up, you know, what do I do? And one of the things that I do is silver picker. Silver picker is a huge part of my life, so obviously I'm going to talk about it. And I did talk about it, and a lot of people found it interesting, quirky, unusual, weird, whatever. But this one girl who comes from uh, of Russian descent said, wow, I actually got inherited a couple of gold coins from my grandfather, but I don't know what to do with them, I don't know anything about them. 
And what's funny enough is we ended up exchanging phone numbers, uh, not because we were interested in dating each other, but because she wanted to uh, have me evaluate her coins. And I did just that. So I ended up meeting up with her uh, a couple days later and she showed me these coins that she had. And I'm gonna adjust the camera a little bit so that we can get a little bit of a better view. And she comes over and she has these three coins. And she says that her grandfather saved them from back when he was, you know, a young guy. I guess he had invested in them or whatever. And there were these three classic gold coins. I asked her what she wanted to do with them. She said, first, I'm just curious to know what they're worth. So I basically showed her the details. These two I have bought in the past. So I was very familiar with these. I'll show you what they are in a second. But this one, this one I had never seen before. And it is a super, super interesting story when you do find out about it. So I will tell that story as well. Um, but another thing I'll point out, by the way, is I know, and I've been getting some negative feedback, understandably, that some of my up close shots of coins are not quite as, um, as clear and as nice as they could be. And part of that is just because I'm using the stock lens on my new camera. This camera was funded by my Patreon patrons and I really just wanna give them a huge data, shout out to thank them. So I've had this camera now for probably, uh, I would say close to a year, maybe a year, maybe a little bit less, but it's time to upgrade the lens. I really owe it to you guys to have a better lens so that you guys can see the coins, which is the main thing, right? You don't need to see my pretty face, right? Well, I mean, some of you might, but you know, for the most part, you guys wanna see the coins. So if you are interested in supporting my channel and my mission of teaching people all over the world about coin collecting, precious metals investing, and sort of the business of buying and selling coins like this video, and you wanna make help me make it even better, well, the links for Patreon are below, and in addition to supporting me and knowing that you're helping the community at large, well, there's also some perks for you. First off, I give away an ounce of silver every single month to one of one lucky patron and the real benefit the real real benefit is you get access to my private discord server which has become like really one of the best communities on precious metals and gold and silver and coins that you can find and it is a real blast and the people in there are awesome uh, we're so far 75 members and it is just a blast so if you are interested in helping out uh, improve the channel and support the channel the links are below but in any case, these are the three coins that she had and she ended up deciding that she wanted to sell them to me and that was phenomenal. So I'll tell you what they're worth and then I'll tell you what I paid and you guys can see what you think about that, whether you think I got a good deal, I obviously did get a good deal, whether you thought it was fair, what you guys would have done and we can debate about that in the comments. So first off, let me show you what we have here. I'll show you these two coins first. So this is a Tsar Nikolai II Russian gold coin and this one, as you can see on the reverse, is from 1897. You can see there, 1897. But what is really interesting about this one is the denomination. This is, as you can see, it says seven and 50. So that is seven rubles and 50 kopecks. So the denomination is 7.5. How weird is that, right? That would be like having a 75 cent piece or, a, or more like a $7.50 piece uh, in the US. So this is a coin that weighs 6.45 grams. It's compri composed of 900 gold, so 90% gold. And the gold value alone is about $340 in today's uh, melt prices. Over here, we have uh, his big brother over here, not the, uh, the monarch, this is, or the Tsar, this is also Tsar Nikolai II. Uh, this one is from 1900, but what I meant by that is this one is a 10 ruble coin. So this is a 10 ruble gold coin, and this one is from 1900, and this one weighs 8.6 grams of 90% gold, and this one clocks in at $450. So in gold alone, these two are about $790. So that's pretty awesome. So it's $790 worth of gold. So for all of you newbies out there, like, isn't it crazy the difference in value between uh, gold and silver? I mean, it's really just incredible. And you can see it, you know, in real life when you're looking at coins like this, where this is literally, uh, you know, almost $800 worth of gold. And it would take stacks and stacks and stacks of silver to reach that same amount. So those are the common ones. Those are the easy ones. This one, however, is incredibly interesting. This is 
At first glance, not even a Russian coin. At first glance, this is a Dutch coin. This is a Dutch, a Dutch gold ducat. And this one is from 1831. And you can see this little uh, you know, soldier on there and he's got a sword and he's got a bunch of arrows. And uh, it's really, really cool. Very cool design. And on the reverse, you see, you see some words and it says mo or reg regi ad legum imperi. Now, I don't know exactly what that means. Somebody can put it in the comments below, but this looks like a Dutch gold ducat, right? Well, you would think, but with lots of numismatics and my favorite part of numismatics is contemporary uh, counterfeits. And that's what this is. So this is a gold ducat that was made by Russia. So it's actually said that Russia made even more of these than the Dutch did. And these are really interesting pieces of numismatic history, just because when you have a contemporary counterfeit, I mean, the Dutch government really tried to get Russia to stop making these, but uh, obviously Russia does what Russia does and did whatever they wanted. So these are super interesting. This one is from 1831, as I said, and it's hard to say exactly what the gold content is. Uh, I've done a bunch of research and have not been able to find anything on it, but I would assume it's probably somewhere in the you know 80 to 90 percent uh, range. And if you look online, there's a pretty wide range of prices as well. Uh, the lower end, which are the ones that I see from the 1900s, those ones seem to go for about $225 to $250. And the ones from the 1800s seem to go more in the $400 to $500 range. So that's what this one is. So we can put it probably conservatively at about $400, which means that the three of these coins together are worth about $1,200. Now, I would love it if somebody who is watching, who knows more about gold Russian coins than I do, would be willing to uh, give me a little bit more info on this one and see if I got the pricing right. These ones I'm pretty confident on. Uh, these ones go for a little bit more than spot. I mean, I've seen some of these go for you know six, seven hundred dollars. The uh, Nikolai the Second ones, which I think is really wild, and uh, I am still trying to figure out how I want to price these when I sell them, but. I am interested in selling these because I do want to convert uh, some of these into US gold coins so I can work on my US gold typeset. If you missed that video, you can check it out in the card over here. But I am working on a US gold typeset and if I can uh, sort of trade these for the coins that I'm looking for uh, US wise, that would be great. Otherwise, generally I try and hold on to most of the gold coins that I buy. Uh, especially if I get as good a deal as I did on these. And what did I actually pay for these coins? Drum roll, please. Well, I paid $790 for the three of these coins. And at the time, that was about 75% of the value uh, of these coins. That was about uh, a couple months ago that I actually made the purchase. I just never got around to making the video on it. So I think I did really, really well. Obviously, gold went up a little bit, and uh, some of these turned out to be a little bit more valuable than I expected. This, originally, I thought this one was a little bit less valuable. I originally thought this was in the more like the $250 range, because uh, the only ones I saw on, sold on eBay were the ones from the early 1900s. Now that more have been sold, it seems like this is probably in the $405 range. So I probably would have paid her a little bit more um, had I had that information. But in any case, I think you know she got a, a pretty good deal overall, um, and uh, you know she would have gotten much much less had she gone to uh, you know any of the uh, cash for gold places, which was what her original plan was. So I'm really happy with this. But now let's talk about what you can be out on the lookout for in the future when you are out and about and have the opportunity to buy some gold coins. So when you're buying gold coins, like I said before, right, the value is so high compared to the size of the coin, right? So in this case, right, you're putting hundreds and hundreds of dollars into one basket, right? You're putting all your eggs into one basket. But if you were buying silver, right, there's a lot more room to spread out risk. So you have to be really, really careful when you are buying gold coins. So how do you protect yourself? Well, you probably saw over here that I have two different things here. These are two different tools. This one is a scale, it's a digital scale. And this one over here 
a set of digital calipers. And I'm going to show you how to use them both in the effort to try and figure out whether or not these coins are legitimate and how you can avoid spending your hard-earned money on uh, forgeries. And we're not talking about forgeries like this one. This is a contemporary forgery that is actually made of gold. I'm referring more to like fake gold coins where it's like uh, lead plated in gold. So with gold coins, it's actually fairly easy to determine whether or not they're legit because gold is such a dense metal that there are very few other metals that you could confuse gold with. Meaning, even if you took lead, right? Let's say you tried to make the same coin out of lead and gold plated, it, it would, in order for it to be the same weight because gold is so dense, you would have to make the, the lead coin significantly wider. Uh, or you'd have to make it the same diameter, but it would be much lighter. So using a scale and a way to measure the diameter, uh, and also theoretically measuring the height of the coin, uh, is pretty much a foolproof way of determining whether it's real. Now, I will caveat that because I know somebody in the comments is going to write about what about tungsten. Well, tungsten is a metal that does have very similar density to gold, but it's much, much harder still to make an accurate looking gold coin out of tungsten and then plate it, uh, especially as it's so small. But if you were buying gold bars, then that's something to definitely be much more worried about. So let's take a look at one of these coins and see how I would go about verifying it. So the first thing I want to do is I use a resource that I can trust, whether it's like a Krauss book, which if you are interested, you can get the paper copy uh, through my link in the description below, or you could use a free resource like Numista. I use Numista all the time. I find it to be very accurate. And uh, in this case, it has the stats saying that this is supposed to weigh six point, excuse me, 8.6 grams, as we said before. So here we've got 8.57. That is definitely close enough, especially if I press on it, I'll probably be able to get it closer. Yeah, 8.58. That is definitely, definitely within like the reasonable range. You know, these are not always going to be perfect. And then obviously, if the coin has had some wear on it, it might not be perfect as well. So this coin passes. This one, the seven and a half rubles, this one is supposed to be 6.45 grams. So you'll have to zero that out. And let's see what this says. 6.44, that is dang close. And again, like I said, if I push on it, maybe I could even get it up to the correct, yep, there we go. Or close enough, right? So these coins, in terms of weight, are definitely legit. Now this one, now this coin, on the other hand, I do have a weight for it. It's supposed to weigh about 3.49 grams. And we're gonna take a look over here, let's see. This one weighs 3.42, but it is very worn down, so it is reasonable uh, that it would be a little bit off weight. Um, but unfortunately, that's the only stat that I have about this coin. I don't actually have a diameter or thickness for this coin. So I did have to take a little bit of a risk on it, but because I have a lot of experience with gold, even though I'm not experienced with this particular coin, I can say with, with pretty much without a shadow of a doubt that this is indeed a real authentic gold coin, or I should say a real authentic forgery of a real gold coin that also happens to be real gold. So that's a mouthful. So these all passed the weight test, right? So that's a really, really good start. Now, the fun part. <clears throat> now, we check out what the diameter is and match it up to this device, which measures. Well, we had a bit of a technical difficulty. It turns out that my batteries on this are dead. So when I hit the on off button, it does not show on screen. So that's a little bit of an issue, but have no fear. There are still analog measurements available on here as well. It won't be quite as precise. And uh, I think if I was in a pinch, I would still do this even if I was buying. So basically what you do normally, it reads out on screen exactly how many millimeters it is. But you basically roll this guy out and you have to be really careful. And I would not do this on a coin that I was worth significantly more uh, than its gold weight because you don't want to scratch it. But essentially, you just go like this and you find out what its diameter is by looking here, right here, at what the readout is. And here we see that it's about 22 millimeters. And what's it supposed to be? Well, it's supposed to be 22.5 millimeters. Now, I think it would show that, and I did do this uh, when I was buying it with the uh, fully loaded calipers with the batteries running. So I do know for sure that it is indeed correct. Um, but you would do the same thing for this one as well. This is the 7.5, and it is supposed to have 21.3 millimeters diameter. And you can see, 
right about there that it is just over 21 millimeters. Now, unfortunately, I don't have data for this one, and uh, it is very thin, and it is worth more than its gold weight, so I am not going to put it in the calipers. But basically, this is a super simple way to determine whether or not your gold coins are real or not. And it is just that simple, right? If you get the weight right and you get the diameter right, for the most part, you're gonna have the thickness right as well. In this case, I did not check the thickness. The thickness would be meaning the distance between here and here on the edge, right? So the height of the coin, you could say. Um, and that is another way to check. So if you were able to check the diameter, the height or thickness and the weight and all of those check out, you've almost definitely got yourself a real gold coin. And whether or not it's possible to counterfeit, sure. But would I take the risk? Absolutely. So anyway, this is the ridiculous story of how I bought coins at a singles speed dating event and ended up with these three awesome gold coins. Now you know how much I paid for them, you know what they're worth, you know how to determine whether or not they're real when you're out in the wild on your own. And uh, I really just enjoyed sharing this with you. Now, if you are interested in making a trade for any of these coins for their uh, American gold counterparts, I'm open to it. I'm also open to selling them. Uh, I do know that one of my patrons already asked for at least one of them, so that is reserved for her. But in any case, uh, let me know. Put it in the comments below. Shoot me an email at thesilverpicker at gmail.com and we will make a deal. If you like videos like this, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button. I've asked you that a million times already in this video, so I will shut up about it. But I really do hope you enjoyed the video. I make videos like this every single week about coin collecting, precious metals investing, personal finance, alternative investments, and much, much more. So stick around, stay tuned. I've got a lot more awesome stuff coming down the pike, so stay tuned. And until then, Silver Picker out. A huge, huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons. You guys are amazing. Again, I could not do this without you. You guys are the ones who are able to really take my videos to the next level. And I will hopefully be able to afford that new lens to get you all that up close, amazing, crystal clear footage of the coins. So if you're not yet a patron and want to become one, the links are below.